The clerk. Private members' business, notice number five, motion on the cruise liner industry. Deputy Speaker, I move that the motion relating to cruise liner industry in the terms in which it appears in the notice paper. The, uh, sorry, there's the member for Bowman. Uh, sorry, thank you very much. The question is the motion be agreed to. The member for Bowman. Well, thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. And it's an opportunity tonight for us to recognise the extraordinary contribution made by the cruise liner industry in Australia, a $3.2 billion industry. And I'm probably one of the first people to rise in this place and say thank you on behalf of the millions who have enjoyed a cruise at an affordable price for a unique and special experience. But there's a, another level of this debate that's been brought to light in New South Wales. And I do want to highlight that Australia is probably the last major economy in the world. Certainly, uh, we stand apart from the EU, the Caribbean and the Americas in that our cruise ships visiting Australian ports are burning the thick black stuff and not the clear stuff. We need to get these emissions down in all our cities. It happens in the rest of the world. And I think tonight is an opportunity for us to appeal to the cruise ship liner industry to do just that and to do it through corporate social responsibility and not through further regulation. Just this week, we have had an announcement from the coalition, New South Wales government, the Liberal government in New South Wales, that as soon as possible after this week's election, they intend to reduce regulation to require cruise ships at birth in New South Wales to use ultra low sulphur diesel with a sulphur content of less than 100 parts per million. And by July of next year, they will be moving that cruise ships use low sulphur diesel at all times in Australian areas, certainly in zones around major ports. I commend New South Wales for that, but I ask the logical question, what happens in the rest of Australia? This is a federal issue, but more importantly than anything, it's an opportunity for the cruise ship industry to step forward and do something as a form of corporate social responsibility. Now, I acknowledge the economic impacts of cruise ship liners in major cities. I acknowledge the impact in regional economies like Townsville, like Burnie, uh, like parts of Western Australia and up the Queensland coast. But above all, I think about the fact that it's no one's fault that there is high density living right next to cruise ship liners and where these overseas terminals exist. It's no fault of anyone's that people want to live next door to where these large shipping liners berth. Now, this is far away from ports, and I know the, the objections from the cruise ship industry about burning clean fuel. And they are predominantly based around price, that there's a 16 cent litre difference, that the supply is not guaranteed, that they don't all have an auxiliary, auxiliary fuel tank, particularly in older cruise liners, and that the long-term plan is a Marpole 2020 target of scrubbers. But that is not the answer for residents living close to these shipping uh, terminals right now that have high sulphur uh, fuels being burnt, effectively a bunker oil with 2,700 to 3,500 parts per million, basically burning 100 metres away from where they live. Now, they can't move, and I know that in many cases you might say they might have been there first, but unlike the ports where we have large carriers burning this stuff, they're not in densely populated locations, and to be honest, the ships were there first. But in overseas cruise ship terminals, all I ask is one thing. To the cruise ship industry, do what is affordable, reasonable, feasible. And if you can minimise an emission for the cost of a Big Mac per person, just do it. And don't be dragged to that point and look completely reluctant about it. Now, I've talked to the ship owners, I've talked to the cruise ship industry, and I must admit I've encountered shifting opposition and a whole lot of reasons why they can't do it. But Caltex has popped the bubble. They can deliver it in five days. Caltex has told us it's not even half a tanker to refuel one of these shipping liners and make sure that kids living nearby aren't breathing in high particulate, high sulphur matter that turns to sulfuric acid when you breathe it in. It's not good enough in the Industrial Revolution, although it dragged England out of the, the Middle Ages, but we can do better than having kids working in coal mines. We can do better than having this kind of emission 100 metres away from living areas and high density residential. New South Wales Coalition can act. So every other state in Australia will be asking exactly the same, uh, th same question. Why is it good enough that in the EU you can't travel between ports without burning the clean stuff? Why is it that in the US you can't even come near a port without burning the clean stuff? And all of these liners have the clean stuff on board an auxiliary tank, but they won't switch, the, they won't flick the switch. And why is it? Because it costs a, a Big Mac meal deal per person. It's a $4,000 cruise ship ticket. It's eight bucks to burn the clean stuff. It is such a simple request, and I'm stunned that when you're sitting around a boardroom table discussing your corporate social responsibility, that someone's still saying in a 1970s attitude, 
whatever you want for corporate social responsibility, as long as it doesn't hurt our bottom line. Well, this one barely hurts your bottom line. This stuff is 16 cents a litre cheaper. This stuff should not be burnt in a public, close to where people live. This stuff is revolting. Ask, it should not be burnt member, anywhere near where I children ask the live. To we can do better than that. We can burn the clear stuff. Props. It's eminently available. We I should be using that and not this. Props. And I insist on the cruise ship industry to clean up their act and burn the clean stuff like they do in the rest of the world. I, I, uh, I, I thank the uh, member for uh, Bowman, and I would ask the member to clean up the mess that he has left out of respect for the attendance here in the chamber. Uh, do we have a seconder for the motion? Uh, yes, I'll, I'm seconding it. Yes. Uh, Thank you very much. And uh, the question is that the motion be agreed to, and I call the member for uh, Sydney. Thank, thank you, Acting De Deputy Speaker. I, I'm not going to uh, even attempt to um, uh, uh, follow the theatricality of that, but I certainly would say uh, to the um, Spain and France. Before we go to questions without notice, I have a statement I wish to make. The member for Karangamite has reported to me an incident that occurred in the Federation Chamber last evening when she was presiding as Deputy Speaker and involving the member for Bowman. As I understand it, towards the end of his speech on his motion on the cruise liner industry, the member for Bowman picked up one of two bottles he had brought into the chamber purporting to contain bunker fuel. He then proceeded to pour some of the contacts, the thick black fuel, onto his hand spilling onto the desk and floor of the Federation Chamber. In his remarks, the member himself acknowledged the dangerous nature of the material. Setting aside the member's offence in making use of props, it is highly disorderly to bring dangerous and inflammable, inflammable substances into either of the chambers. I consider the member's actions to be totally disorderly, disrespectful of the House and the Federation Chamber, and potentially dangerous to the health and safety of members and staff of the Federation Chamber. I understand there has been damage to the Federation Chamber, which we are endeavouring to repair. Standing Order 187 provides that action pursuant to Standing Order 94 can only be taken against a member in the House. This includes under provisions under 94A and 94B. Accordingly, I ask the member to apologise to the House for his reckless and highly disorderly actions. I give the member the opportunity now. Thanks, Madam Speaker, and I do apologise. Well, I thank the member for that apology, but nonetheless, I consider the offence to be so serious and of such disorderly nature that I name the member for Bowman. I give the call to the Leader of the House. I move that the member be suspended from the service of the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The member for Bowman is now suspended from the service of the House for a period of 24 hours. We'll now move. I call the Honourable the Prime Minister.